So hi, everyone. Thank you for coming for our global coordination call. Uh, this is the last one in 2022. And today we are going to be discussing about um, challenges and how the chapters will be able to, to solve them, improving their engagement and their membership activities. I am Isabella Spindola, and I'm the focal point for uh, young water professionals within IWA. So yes, I'm the one responsible for sending all the notifications um, and the opportunities via your, your emails. And if you have any kind of questions regarding the YWP community or even how to become a, a member and get engaged with IWA, please feel free to reach out to me that I will, more, I will be more than happy to, to help you with all of, of this information. So just a quick overview about the chapters and this amazing community that we have all of, over the world. We have more than 35 chapters and this community keeps growing. So if you know someone that is not part of a chapter and wants to connect, please do send me an email and I can help you uh, forming the chapter or also establishing connection for you to join one of the chapters that we are already have, uh, as you can see here in, in the map. And uh, we really do um, try to engage the water professionals and the country chapters with all the other communities that we have with IWA. So if you are part of IWA and if if you want to get connected and to meet other other members, you can join the specialist groups. You can join the activities with a governing member. Uh, if you have more than five years uh, as an active IWA members, you can apply to be a fellow and later a distinguished fellow. This is the highest recognition that you can have uh, and you can achieve with IWA. You can also join the international water regulators. Um, some of our programs that we have, the water wise cities, the basin connected cities, the climate smart utilities. Uh, you can participate in our events uh, in person and online, join the publications with the IWA publishing team. And you can check all this information in our website. And for those that joined our last Congress in Copenhagen, it was a success. And I'm sharing some of the photos from the plenary, from the presentations uh, that we had from the Emerging Water Leaders Forum, and all the amazing discussions that the youth uh, took the lead during, during the, the World Water Congress. So for those who were there, congratulations for your engagement in Copenhagen. Um, our, won't be the only one speaking and moderating <laughs> the, the event today, so don't worry, don't, you know, we won't be hearing just my voice today. I will be joined by Chen Li and Shotaro Goto. They are the members of the YWP steering committees, and they're also the ones responsible for the chapter's coordination. So um, they are really keen to get to know the chapter, to meet the chairs, and, and connect with them. If you are part of a chapter, especially if you're the chair or the vice chair, and you want to get to know them, they are here today. So just drop them a message in the chat and they will kindly help you with your questions and, and specific that you want to know about the, the chapters. Um, before we jump into the presentations, uh, just some quick aspects in terms of how to use Zoom. I know that the most of you are already familiar with the platform, but quickly on this, if you have any questions, you can post in the chat. Uh, feel free to introduce yourself. So say, hi, my name is, um, my case is Isabella. I'm from Brazil and I work with the IWA, Sec IWA Secretariat. So connect via the chat and, and try to engage as much as possible with the presentation that we have today, but also with the participants that we have here. Uh, feel free to to mute uh, to unmute yourself during the discussion. So we want to know your questions, uh, and we want you to participate. But during the presentations, only the speakers are allowed to to open their uh, their audio. 
and you don't need to be concerned with sharing the screen. I will be the one doing this during during the, the event today. Okay. So Shotaro and Chen, uh, now is your time. <laughs> I will hand over to both of you. Okay, thank you very much for that, Isabella. So, Chen, can you uh, moderate the presentation from each chapter? Okay, sure. So, I think before that, we should do a brief introduction of ourselves to let the participant know us. So I want to say hello, everyone. Welcome to our AWA Onward Professionals Global Coordination Call. Uh, I'm Chen Li, come from academia, working on the bell gas recovery from wastewater and wastes. I'm part of AWA Onward Professionals Steering Committee and uh, responsible for chapter coordination with my partner, Shotalo. Uh, I'm also a newly elected vice chair of of uh, YWP China chapter. So I'm happy to be here and to be a volunteer for this event. Uh, thank you very much. So Shotelo, do you want to give a brief introduction before our presentation? Okay, again, thank you very much for participating in today's event. And I'm Shotelo from Japan, but currently I'm not living in Japan. I'm living in the West Africa, especially I'm currently living in the Gambia, but now I'm living in the Senegal, Dakar. And I'm working at the UN as a watch specialist now. Thank you very much again. So, Queen, can you, uh, Jen, can you uh, do the next option? Okay, so I will introduce the speakers. Um, Claudia from uh, Ecuador chapter and Beatrice from Italy chapter. Uh, Matthew from UK chapter, Anya from South Africa chapter and uh, uh, Anik from Pakistan. So Isabella, please turn to the next page. Okay, uh, this is our agenda. Yeah, you, you have received the email. So the first session is welcome and the meeting objective. And the second session is the plantation of IW country chapter. And the first chapter is Ecuador and the second one is Pakistan, then UK and South Africa and Italy. Uh, then we will have the open discussion with all WP chapters, uh, chapter com committee members. So you can have some questions to uh, our speakers, then closing remarks and updates from IWA and IWA WP steering committee. Okay. So the end, so next is the uh, plantation. Okay, so uh, thank you very much for your coming and we are looking forward to you to share to your share on the challenges and solutions for IWA Young Water Professionals chapter membership engagement. Uh, so let's welcome our first speaker, Claudia Bren from Ecuador. Uh, okay, it's our time, Claudia. Thank you very much, uh, Chi, for the presentation. Hi, everybody. It's very nice to be here meeting all of you. Uh, as Chi already uh, said, I'm with the Ecuadorian chapter. We are a relatively new chapter. We started, uh, did our kickoff uh, event the, earlier this year, and uh, we have several lessons learned but a lot of things to learn from you guys as well. Um, I'm the events and communication, uh, communication officer in the Ecuadorian chapter and also part of the Global Steering Committee uh, in YWP. But in the Ecuadorian chapter, we're still a um, very small chapter, so we don't really have fixed roles. It's, more of everybody works on anything that's needed to be done. So um, that's how we, we've been working for now. So uh, just to organize a little bit uh, this uh, short presentation, as I mentioned, we started the paperwork to form the Ecuadorian chapter eight last year, and we uh, started the actual chapter earlier this year. We had our kickoff event on February where we did the presentation and we said, 
Hey everyone, we are the Ecuadorian chapter. We're starting this out. And we had the first contact with the IWA Ecuador chapter as well. That's also a relatively new chapter in uh, IWA. So um, we're still trying to understand how to collaborate there. Um, our first order of business was getting a little bit more organized, uh, coming up with a work plan, trying to identify a vision for our chapter as well, and setting up some goals, both for this year and uh, a little more long term in the first couple of years of existence. And now that we've already um, set our wants, we are starting to see that one of our main, uh, not problems, but hiccups is with the establishing a pipeline for new members engagement. Because once we did our uh, kickoff event, we had a lot of interest from a lot of different people saying, this is so interesting, we want to be a part of this. But we weren't really sure how to uh, capitalize on that interest and turned it into engagement because uh, probably you all have similar experiences when you just open up the chapter and say, okay, everybody is now part of the Ecuadorian chapter, the work kind of gets diluted. And if you're on a group that you have like 50 people, no one really takes accountability for the things that need to be done. So that's what I mean when it gets a little diluted because um, you just receive messages and say, oh, somebody else is going to see that and somebody else is going to, to take care of that. And that's one of the things we, we were really worried about. So we went the other route and tried to keep everything on our um, founders uh, committee. But then again, we had a lot of interest and that, that part was the hardest for us to try to convert that into actual engagement. What we've been doing now that I think uh, it's working really well, that could be an advice for new chapters, is the founder members, uh, in, it, it wasn't intentional, but we are all uh, women. <laughs> We all, uh, the ones that started the chapter, we are five uh, women that uh, work in Ecuador. And each of us is bringing someone as kind of like our protege. So we have more people and more hands to work, but the responsibility is still ours. So that kind of help getting more hands, but not diluting the responsibility chain. So, I think that's been working well because as you all know, since this is volunteer, volunteer positions and work gets crazy all the time. So sometimes your disponibility to, to give your time to events and, and to, to do this sort of, of uh, work is not ideal, but having this kind of protege or someone that can step up when you are kind of busy on and cannot do meetings or things like that, that uh, has worked very well. Also, we have a particularity that even though we are the Ecuadorian chapter, I'm currently working in Washington, DC, even though I'm Ecuadorian and Brazilian as well. <laughs> but we have another one that's finishing up her PhD and she is in Belgium currently. And one of our founders as well is uh, from Belgium, but is doing her PhD in Ecuador. So she's traveling around a lot. So we had a lot of different time zones to account for during our, our meetings. So that also kind of complicated things. Another one of our founder members is uh, works in as manager in a drinking water treatment plant. So she has really weird <laughs> times to for her meetings and, and that sort of things. So that was one of our challenges that kind of helped with this bringing somebody uh, else as a protege. Then what we've wanted to do and what we are working this year was the kickoff event that we already did. And it was really interesting because we um, asked for the help of 
uh, both uh, Isabella and also uh, other chapters. So they uh, went and gave their experience. So that kind of gives us a little bit more of an idea of what we could uh, do as a YWB chapter, not only us, but all the people that were interested on joining the Ecuadorian chapter. We uh, finished up our work plan. And one of the things that we are currently working very hard to try to finish this year <laughs> is a um, series of courses or kind of workshops, because we in Ecuador, we used to have a very strong uh, scholarship program with the government and people that got the, uh, the scholarship needed to transfer knowledge back as a form of payment. And coincidentally, I'm one of these uh, scholars uh, that already finished uh, their studies and I need also to do this compensation that we call. And I saw there uh, an interesting opportunity because the scholars needed to give courses free of charge to, to do this knowledge transfer. And we as YWP Ecuador wanted to do some sort of events of engagement to give uh, value to the people that wanted to join. So currently we are talking to these different uh, scholarship recipients that will be doing some uh, very technical courses because we need to do like 20 hours. So it's like a, a heavy course to be able to comply with uh, all the regulations and everybody be happy, we're trying to partner with different universities in Ecuador. So we have their seal of approval. The scholar can get the, okay, you transfer knowledge and people also can have uh, a better idea of these, uh, the importance of this knowledge uh, being transferred. Right now, I think it's a natural uh, building environment. We are also thinking of something with water for agriculture and uh, a more basic hydraulics class kind of for people in the water sector, but are not really engineers or hydraulic engineers. So kind of like an introduction to hydraulic engineering. And the other thing is establishing corporations, both within Ecuador and with the YWP chapters worldwide. We, uh, the Canada chapter contacted us recently to see if we can have in January a meeting to kind of uh, do some networking and exchange experiences. And we're very grateful for that because it's always good to have a chapter with more experience to kind of uh, lead you through the, through the process. So I think those are the, the, the main uh, things we've been working on. Another thing we tried, but we are still not excellent is with social media and Twitter and LinkedIn. We already created the social media, but we need to come up with some sort of like publishing schedule to, to be more consistent and to, to generate more engagement. We created emails, uh, but like a domain mainly for the email part, but we also plan next year to do at least a landing page, ecuador.org can see the where to write or where to participate, but that's our project for next year as well. And I think that's pretty much my time. Uh, the other slides, it's the same thing, but like prettier. <laughs> So this is what we, we've been doing. Uh, of course, we did first a survey of all the interesting, uh, interested people that wanted to join and also to know these uh, training uh, and courses that we are trying to come up with. We wanted to know what people needed in order to supply that demand. So we don't end up with a course that nobody really <laughs> needs. And that was uh, one of our first steps, the international cooperation and also national cooperation. And then the next uh, slide. This is uh, our goals for the next uh, few years. Uh, we do plan a national event in 2023. Our, our strategy is to, to latch onto another event that's already happening. So we can try to, I don't know, diversify the need for like the logistics and all of that, that it's a little more complicated when you're a small group. So maybe being in charge of one of the days or trying to do it after or kind of like a pre-event or something like that, but we're still thinking on that. 
And we also have the good intentions of publica uh, publicating the experiences of our, our members on our social media and different initiatives, projects, and whatever um, needs to, to, to get a highlight on. So that's one of our intentions with our social media. And then uh, the next slide. Okay, I'm sorry. We have we don't have much time, so only one minute. Yeah, that's it. That's the last slide. The, this is uh, the founder members and our contact information. We are on LinkedIn and Twitter, and you can always shoot us an email as well. That's it. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Claudia. Thank you for uh, sharing your challenges. And although Ecuador chapter is a new chapter, but uh, I have seen that you have taken some initiatives. Uh, so thank you very much. Okay, let's move on to the next uh, chapter. Uh, Pakistan, the speaker is Anik. Okay, start your Hello everyone. Thank you so much, Ian. Hello, everyone. I hope you're having a great day. Most of the people I'm looking at are in bright sunlight. I'm sitting in a dark area. So yeah, it's good evening for anyone who is from this side of the world. Um, my name is Anik, and um, uh, I just like to give a personal introduction first. I'm a PhD scholar in decentralized portable generation. And um, I also happen to be a small chairman of uh, the uh, in, uh, Iowa YWP Pakistan chapter. Um, I'm very excited to have you people here and I'm very excited to be one of the very uh, one of the chair, uh, chairs to represent the chapters uh, on this global coordination call. Uh, can we move on to the next slide? <clears throat> okay, so uh, this uh, is something um, that I'm really proud of. This picture is my pride and my focus of the year 2022. So Ecuador just said that they are the, that they are a relatively new chapter. So uh, while in uh, World Water Congress, we we were the youngest chapter at the time. So we still uh, we still are younger than Ecuador. Uh, uh, so uh, we uh, had started our operations in July this year. And since then, we have achieved quite a lot with the help of uh, International Water Association's headquarters and the fellow chapters as well. Um, we have carried on with us a philosophy, which we in Urdu called Manji. Manji uh, means a boat rower, a person who rows the boat and takes you from one bank to the other bank. So any person who is there to help us, who is there to bring the youth into the dialogue and any person who is there to, to take care of us, is a manji for us. Kala Vairava Murthy is a manji for us. Isabella is a manji for us, right? So all of these people are manji and this is an honor that we give to the people in the local context and the international context. Um, this is a view of uh, the members. So this picture is full of volunteers, full of happy faces, engineers and uh, social scientists and workers and uh, my team, all of them are here in this picture, and uh, this was the very first conference uh, that we did just right after the World Water Congress, which was much bigger of a challenge. Um, so yeah, so now you see the happy faces, and now I'm good to go with more towards the slides. So um, meet my team. Uh, um, I, I'm sorry if I'll be boasting about this, but I have the best team ever. Right. So um, this this team consists of a very um, appreciative representation of women in water. And I'm I cannot be more proud of that because Pakistan being a low to middle income country, having such instances where uh, where women are not represented and the male to female ratio even exceeds 100. So we are the ones who are actually giving a half and half representation of both the genders and trying to bring in the dialogue of the female gender as well. Um, I carry the country position, uh, the, the country chair position. Qasim is in this call with me. He carries the country secretary position. Um, Asman, Shifa, Alina, Simbra, Sami, Barira, if you are here, kudos to you. You're doing a great job, guys. Okay, can we move on to the next one? 
So um, as uh, Claudia said, that there is a complete framework that needs to be completed before you get to have the auspicious IVA with your name and country. So after going all through that processes, uh, we landed on some goals and some key some goals and some key areas. So the goals are basically going to be, uh, especially for the people who want to establish a chapter, the goals have to be in alignment with the six high level aims of International Water Association's Young Water Pro professionals. Um, so we have mapped these goals and we have taken um, oath to advocate uh, IBA YWP. We have uh, taken oath to appreciate the heritage that we carry as a South Asian country uh, and uh, in, the, uh, in the outskirts of Middle East and Central Asia. Uh, we have taken the oath to collaborate and to spread uh, knowledge and awareness. We have taken the oath for professional development of the youth. Uh, and we have taken the oath to empower the youth to make decisions and to take the water agenda in their hands and take decisions that really matters. But saying all of this might be a mouthful of word and in order to make it achievable and practical, we have divided our complete year into nine key areas. Um, and we are going to conquer one key area at a time, one by one. And we have key area custodians for these particular purposes. Um, I'd love to have you guys crack the emoji code and then um, maybe uh, when the discussion uh, session is on, we can come on to it backwards and see what have you guessed from the emoji code. Uh, the guiding philosophy, as I said, is Manji, which is an Urdu word meaning a rower or a navigator. So we carry this philosophy as a way to give back to the people. Um, just recently, um, uh, Iba YWP Pakistan has uh, awarded the uh, the guest of honor award uh, to the executive director of of uh, Iba, Mr. Kala Vairavamurthy, for his tremendous services for the youth. Uh, and then we have some local manjis with us as well. Uh, these are the two people that have helped us throughout uh, the thick and thins of this year. Um, and and I guess uh, these people have the most content faces that you will see, just because they they are content in in lift of the youth with them. Can we move on to the next slide? Okay, Badam Tas. So this, this was the time when I finally met my family. Uh, and uh, you can see you can see a lot of people are here in this call as well. So this was the time when um, uh, Pakistan got to be represented for the very first time in the very first year of its inception in World Water Congress, Copenhagen, Denmark. And I cannot be more than happy and I really cannot articulate how to put into words the way these people have welcomed me into the family. Um, uh, and uh, just a big shout out to, to the people who are in the call. I have seen Jacob, I've seen Chelsea, uh, I've seen Augustine. Um, it, 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 was, it was a blessing to meet you all. And the caption and the picture credit goes to Isabella. Uh, she's not in the picture, but she is the main lady behind this. Um, so we have, uh, we had created a video which takes care and takes input of every one of the members that I found uh, during the Young Water Professionals Forum uh, and took their input and you can just scan the QR code and it'll take you to the link and then you can see what every one of them has to say for the Pakistan chapter. And I promise you, this is what you will receive as well. Next one. So YWP Pakistan chapter has always been, you know, being an academician, I'm always very much intensive on the meetings. I mean, even if you're meeting on a tea, I'll call that a meeting. But uh, contrary to my expectations, my team turned out to be so professional. Um, we arranged a complete orientation, uh, orientation session on the Independence Day of Pakistan, the 75th Independence Day, and the first, um, uh, the inception day of IWA YWP Pakistan. So we have created a benchmark uh, the 14th of August as the day we started working. And then our first in-person and the longest meeting, I guess six hours if I'm not wrong. So we sat together for six hours and to decide and develop what to do the next year, how to you know keep up to the mark that IWA and other chapters have created for us. We have to reach the benchmark. And then we just recently had only one picture from that venue, but that venue was photogenic. So yeah, it is a journey of self-awareness as well. But because of Iowa, we are just discovering new places. We are, we are going uh, and looking water from a different perspective now. Can we move on to the next slide? Okay, sorry, only one minute, please. 
Okay, so um, the water talk time is basically we started off with a webinar and then uh, the disproportionate suffering of Pakistani women in flood struck basin. It was uh, completely handled by my team, and you can see it on the YouTube as well. Next. Uh, this was a provocative session, and then we uh, took Iowa to different levels. You can see the vice chancellors of the university sitting here, and we pitched Iowa on that platform and tried to make the most out of the inclusion of Pakistan in the Eva YWP portfolio. Next. And then this was what this one was the spotlight. We had a conference, the Youth Watcher Conference, the first one of its kind conference, completely organized by young professionals. Everyone was below 35 years of age, and we were the people to host the people who were seniors in the field. Like below 35 years of age, hosting the people who are more than 35 years of age was just an amazing event. Next one. We have been able to... Uh, we have been very lucky in order to get some uh, pretty fruitful relationships along the way. Global Water Partnership is one of them. We have been uh, in the MPEC Collective, the UN 2023 Game Changer, and the HSR Foundation. Uh, next one. And uh, we have just recently started a campus ambassadorships. And right now, we have 19 ambassadors nationwide in the universities. And how amazing could that be that we are spreading the word in the universities with a population of 63% youth? Next one. We have published some amazing content. Again, all of this is going to my team. It's their devotion. So this is one of the exclusive giveaway of this session. You can scan the QR code and you'll be redirected to a Google Drive folder where you can see and access all of our reports and the guidelines. And all of this has been done since July 26th. And if we have made you go, whoa, you owe us a follow, like, or subscribe, uh, there's one SoundCloud channel missing. We have just recently started podcasting, so you might want to check that out too. The handles remain the same. Join us on Eva Connect and feel free to reach out to us anytime. We'll be more than happy for any collaborations. Thank you so much, and I'll be waiting for the questions. Okay, thank you very much for your next presentation. Uh, we are all uh, waiting for you are waiting for you to review your emoji code in discussion session. Okay, it's time to move to the next uh, chapter. Okay, the speaker is um, Matthew. Hi, hi everyone. Brilliant. Could we uh, go on to the next slide, please, Jan? So I'll just start off by apologizing. I don't think our presentation will be as uh, as inspiring um, as the previous, but I think it will be worthwhile nonetheless. Um, so I'm Matthew Whaley, uh, Vice Chair of the UK Chapter um, for Young Professionals. Um, I'm not an academic uh, or even technical background. I'm a civil servant. I work uh, uh, the Mayor of London's office, um, previous background as well, working in private water companies in the UK. And um, we've also got a chair on the line now, Kirsten. Kirsten, do you want to just introduce yourself? I will do. Thanks, Matthew. Hi, everyone. I'm excited to, to be here and, and meet you all. My name is Kirsten Faithwatt. I work at Scottish Water, uh, currently working in corporate affairs. Um, and and a kind of key part of, of as we transform and um, making sure the company is going towards customer and community centricity and lucky enough to work with Matthew on the, the UK chapter. Uh, I really like the, the idea of the rower, the navigator. I think, you know, post pandemic as well, it's really interesting way to look at things. So um, I feel a bit sorry for the young water professionals coming up behind us. Uh, I think it's going to be a different world, so it's a nice, a nice way to look at how we can perhaps help and support navigate them through this um, these new times. Brilliant, Thank, thanks, Kirsten. Um, so I'll just give you a little bit of background um, around the history of the chapter. Uh, so we're a small but relatively long, long-standing chapter um, in the uh, in the UK. We've been largely uh, we've had quite a lot of success, and that's largely been driven by a sort of small number of previous chairs and contributors. Um, they've brought a lot to the uh, to the roles that Kirsten and I uh, currently hold now uh, in terms of effort and energy. And what that has led to um, is some some very very clear strengths, um, which uh, you know we'll get onto in a bit. But also um, some areas where I think we could improve. Uh, as a chapter to continue growing and to grow our reach. Um, I think uh, one, one thing that's worth saying as well is that, um, and we'll come on to this later as well, is we're uh, 
as an organisation, as a governing member in the UK, we're hosted by the Institute of Water. The Institute of Water is, uh, is a separate uh, membership organisation for the UK water sector. It's very similar to IWA. I'd stress we don't compete. Uh, Institute of Water is very much based on, um, on the UK, the UK water sector, um, whereas IWA, we bring a sort of complementary offer, uh, which is the international outlook. So over our history, we've sort of organically grown and contracted over time. Um, you know, the focus has swung from different areas to others. But one thing that's sort of been a constant strength, and I would say something that others are trying to replicate now has been our annual Young Professionals uh, Conference. Um, historically, that's always had you know, quite good engagement and a good turnout. And again, over time, depending on who's been the chair or the organizer of that conference, we've ended up with um, representation from different parts of the sector. Um, so that includes uh, representation from the civil service, like me, from uh, private water companies and wastewater suppliers, um, consultancy, academia, and so on and so forth. Um, so over time, if you looked at it, we'd have quite a wide reach, but I'd say from year to year, it's changed um, as to where our you know, most effective engagement has been across the UK. So throughout that time, like I said, our main strength has really been the annual conference. That's something that you know we've had a lot of good feedback on, and it's probably the main effort um, that we uh, that we deliver as a uh, as a chapter. Um, but beyond that, the other things that we constantly are getting pushed um, to do from uh, from our colleagues and our collaborators is to continue bringing other strengths um, that IWA um, has. So the first one being sort of the international connection and the international perspective. Um, in the UK, you know, we're literally an island, but we're also a bit of an island um, uh, uh, in the sense that we have this um, quite a strange uh, water sector with uh, private water companies and regulators and so on and so forth. So the international perspective is quite useful to us. Um, also bringing together research and practice. That's something that we, uh, we're always trying to support and which, uh, again, we get good feedback on. Outside of that, um, there's some clear areas I think we can improve. So um, the first one being a wider program and a program of events. We've been sort of quite sp sporadic in the past, I would say, with this in organizing webinars and workshops um, outside of the conference. It's not that we don't do it or we don't put effort in. But again, as you know, quite a small team, uh, it's difficult to uh, to manage a lot of um, priorities. And with such a clear strength in the conference, often that's what gets um uh, pushed to the top of the pile, whereas other things get dropped. Um, then beyond that, like I said, you know, an area which is clearly for us uh, a priority at the moment is growing and maintaining engagement. It's always been quite uh, quite an effort to get the engagement that we've had, um, but we've been successful in it. And I think we recognise that going forwards, we could be a little bit more structured and um, a little bit more longer term in our thinking around the engagement of collaborating companies um, or supporting companies, but also with uh, YWPs as well. Um, and so uh, just finally, just before we move on to the next slide, just wanted to mention, so the Institute of Water Connection as well, that's been a quite um, formal arrangement in the past and that they've um, provided secretariat and accounting uh, type services to us. Um, so very much uh, allowed for the functioning of IWA as, a, as an organization in the UK to, to happen practically, but also given their strengths in focusing on the UK sector and the, uh, in particular, they have very, very good engagement at a UK private water company level. Um, that could be um, a really great opportunity for further collaboration going forwards, you know, to leverage our strengths and leverage theirs and provide a sort of joint offer to YWPs um, that could be very compelling uh, on on the right um, event or opportunity, obviously. Next slide, please. So I'll take a little bit more of a, a, a look into where we're going and um, I think what we're going to try and implement over the uh, the next couple of years. I mean, the first one is resourcing. So like I said, the, uh, the resourcing challenge of organising the activities amongst two of us can be quite difficult. So we've been moving over the past year or two to um, developing a, a, a group of people to help share the workloads. The key with this obviously is having quite clear responsibilities um, so people can be free to make their own decisions and to take, um, take accountability for different programs. 
Beyond that as well, it's to refocus on our strengths. You know, it's clear our main added value at the moment that we currently deliver is the conference. So we need to leverage that. We need to look to improve that. And we need to make sure that that sort of remains as a key unique selling point to engage people on. Um, beyond that is the growth and the maintenance of engagement in the long term. So we've moved from a couple of years ago, a very, very informal approach of basically, you know, if we need to do a conference, uh, just going out and uh, trying to get sponsorship based on our contacts to um, moving towards a kind of more formalized package based system, um, which has allowed us to uh, leverage more money and to get it over multiple years um, to give us a little bit more um, uh, stability in our finances to uh, to do work. Um, so that's something we're going to try and uh, continue to do. And also um, we're going to look to uh, try and um, formalize our engagement a little bit more with organizations on a non-sponsorship basis to try and, you know, have organizations um, uh, expressing the value of IWA uh, to their young professionals from the start and helping us build the engagement that we need. Beyond that, like I said, we have some UK specific opportunities, the main one being the Institute of Water, really looking forward to taking that further. Um, and then finally, uh, we want to really leverage the strengths of IWA Global a little bit more. Um, the main things I would say about that is that we had a couple of years ago, a great opportunity to uh, invite the Danish chapter of young professionals to um, do a workshop at our conference. That was a, uh, a, a really big success for us. And it's something we're looking to replicate with other chapters. So, you know, doing that collaboration piece. Uh, beyond that, we're also very lucky to have um, the World Water Congress coming to Glasgow in 2026. So for us, you know, we're, we're currently doing a lot of sort of planning and thinking about that. But the main thing is, is, you know, how are we going to align our activities with that event? You know, how are we going to build the engagement within the UK to make Glasgow a, uh, a really great event? And on top of that, how are we going to build the engagement internationally uh, to put together an overall program of YWP offering at Glasgow, um, which, uh, which, which is really, uh, really important and leading. So um, a lot to think about on there. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so that's basically uh, where we're up to. That's a little bit of our experience. I'm really looking forward to hearing uh, some more from the other chapters and uh, feel free to you know, put messages for Kirsten and I in the chat and we'll do our best to answer them, although no promises. Okay, thank you very much for your sharing. So before the next presentation, Shotalo want to add something regarding the uh, posting the question. Yeah, uh, thank you very much for the presentation. Very, very good presentation, I think. So before going to the next two presentations, I have one comment. We also have one question just now, but after the after two presentations, we have a Q&A session. So please post your question or comment if you have with your in, uh, brief introduction, even that during the each presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So next speaker is Anya from South Africa. Hi everyone, great to be here. Hope you can all hear me. Um, yeah, so maybe just give a big, bit of a background to myself. My name is Anya Eilers. I work with an engineering consultancy in Cape Town, South Africa. I've been part of um, YWP South Africa for quite a few years now on and off, but have been the national lead um, since July this year. So very excited to be in this position and to yeah, be working with all of you. You can go on, thank you. So maybe just also give a background to um, the South African young professionals. And it's interesting to see the comment that or the question that just came through, but we do have an affiliation with both um, Iowa as well as the Water Institute of Southern Africa, who we um, um, fall under. And we have a lot of additional support from institutions and the private sector. So that's our kind of affiliation model. Please go on. So where we work, um, a big focus of our um, of our YWP chapter, and you'll see because we have a, quite a big committee, is to really have a local presence in the provinces. Um, this model changed a bit during COVID when a lot of things moved online, but traditionally we've always had a strong presence um, in the provinces, and many of the ones that you see outlined here. Um, and our activities are generally driven in the provinces, so we do a lot of in-person events, um, um, we do, you know, charity events, um, training sessions, a, a whole range of different um, work 
focusing on the provinces. We also have traditionally had a really strong focus on our biannual conferences, and we're very proud to actually have hosted the, um, the biggest um, YWP conference back um, in 2010. So we were really started out quite a long time ago. And since then, we've tried to host a, a biannual conference every year um, for YWP. We usually have around 300 to 400 delegates. And our big conference that I think a lot of people on this call might have attended, I unfortunately wasn't in the country then, but was the um, eighth biennial conference, which happened in Cape Town. And that was an, an international um, YWP conference, which brought people from around the world. We were supposed to have um, another conference in 2021, but that um, was postponed or canceled because of COVID and the, um, yeah, the issues associated with having an in-person conference and also um, we were struggling to get funding from corporations. So I'd be really interested to talk with the, the UK program or the UK YWP chapter to see the kind of methods they use to leverage funding for their annual conference, which is very impressive um, to host that every year. So this is our, oh, sorry, I lost my screen there. This is our um, national committee. So we have a kind of an exco committee that, um, that um, deals with a lot of operational things. So it's myself, um, I have two vice leads supporting me and then also coordination lead, marketing lead and finance lead. And yeah, really fantastic committee and everyone's been um, brilliant with that support. We also have Ashton who everyone knows from the steering, the Iowa steering committee, he's our outgoing national lead. Um, I think we have Jessica in the call with us today. I think she's our only other member from the committee who's sitting with us and yeah, maybe just to, to give her some praise, she's been really instrumental in um, getting our Twitter and our LinkedIn and our social media pages up and running again, which has been, which has been really great. So we've become quite active on those platforms after a silence of quite a few years. Okay, then we also have um, our leads for each of our provinces. So I know our committee um, is, is quite a big one. I think historically we have been quite a big committee, but we really, like I mentioned, um, our, our um, branches in the provinces is really traditionally where we've had our most engagement. So we also have a lead for each of our provinces that are engaged um, and they, they are then supported by kind of the EXCO committee um, who drives things from its national side. Um, not all the provinces are represented and we are um, constantly trying to recruit people from other provinces. Um, for example, we just have um, someone from Mpumalanga province who's interested in starting a chapter there. So yeah, it kind of it kind of fluxes between the years, but our, our core provinces that always typically always have representation is the Western Cape, um, Gauteng and KwaZulu-Natal. And then the smaller provinces, um, depending on whether they have capacity, they go ahead. But we, are, we try and offer a lot of support um, for our smaller provinces. Okay, so maybe just to also link it back to the, the, the Iowa Congress that we had. Um, we're very lucky to have six YWPs from South Africa that were funded by the Danish Embassy um, to attend the Iowa World Water Congress, where we hosted a workshop in collaboration with the um, with the Danish chapter on global megatrends and the workforce of tomorrow. And yeah, as I mentioned, this is part of a, a knowledge exchange with the um, Danish embassy in South Africa. And we also had another, a few other YWPs attend um, the session in their own capacity. So it was a really great way to facilitate that relationship with the Danish chapter. We then had our Danish counterparts. They came and um, took part in the Water Institute of Southern Africa Congress, which happened a month later. So it was a very, a very busy month filled with um, conferences, and that happened in Johannesburg in South Africa. And we hosted the same web, um, the same workshop on global megatrends in the workforce of tomorrow. So got really interesting um, um, outcomes from. Uh, sorry getting sidetracked by the messages really interesting outcomes from both of those and we're hoping to now pull together a publication from these okay so maybe um yeah just a uh, on what we have done so our, our committee is relatively new um we usually typically try to have a committee that is 60 uh, percent previously part of ywp um, but our current committee is almost a brand new committee aside from maybe myself and one or two other people so there's been a lot of learning and, and engaging um, you know as, as a new committee but we've really made a lot of progress in terms of building um, partnerships both locally and internationally we really leveraged on um, 
the Iowa World Water Congress, where we met with both South African and international partners, as well as the, the WISA conference in South Africa. Um, so yeah, so really building up the presence there. We also have part or met a number of different people from other sub-Saharan African um, uh, countries that are either wanting to start up YWP chapters or want to engage with YWP or have their own um, water related chapter that would like to align with YWP. So we've also been having um, those kind of conversations and it's been really useful having Ashton um, sitting in South Africa here who can facilitate these as, um, as the vice chair on the, on the Iowa steering committee. Um, we haven't yet had our annual strategy session. Unfortunately, it keeps on getting delayed for numerous region, reasons, but that is expected to ha be happening this weekend. Um, and I saw Pakistan also had a six hour um, session. That is our plan for Saturday as well. We're going to all meet in our relevant provinces and yeah, have a, a six hour planning session for what we want to achieve over the next two years up until um, July 2024. So that's it from my side. I want to ask if um, Jessica or anyone else from my committee would like to add anything. I, I went through that quite quickly. Are they, yeah. Yeah, nothing, nothing from my side. I think maybe just interesting a comparison point that we do have this sort of provincial um, presence across our mm -hmm. country and maybe to see if anyone has similar experiences. Um, there are a lot of advantages to it, but there are also um, mm. a couple pain points attached to it. So if anyone else has a sort of more um, distributed model, what their reflections are. Okay, thank you very much for your next presentation. Let's move on to the last speaker, uh, Beatrice from Italy chapter. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Sian. Uh, I want to start with saying ciao, hola, hi, hello, and hello. I hope the pronunciations are correct. Otherwise, uh, my bad, sorry. Uh, thanks to Isabella, Shotaro, and Sian for um, organizing this meeting it was very uh, interesting to hear from the other chapters i hope i can uh, bring some other uh, ideas in on on the table um so i'm Beatrice cantoni i'm uh, the vice chair of the italian young water professional chapter uh i'm postdoc uh, at the polytechnico di milano but currently i am uh, in canada for a visiting period so I can relate with Claudia about uh, what she said uh, on the issues about the uh, time zone differences. Uh, so uh, next, next slide, please. Uh, I just want to say that I will speak uh, on behalf of a wider group that I want to thank for the support also in uh, the preparation of uh, this uh, meeting. Uh, we wanted to start with uh, why we started this chapter uh, we we felt that uh, in italy <laughs> actually we had a um, a huge gap between young worker professional and senior worker professional but also a gap between academia and industry and water utilities so we thought that uh, a young water professional chapter from iwa could could have been a, a really good way to bridge uh, all these uh, sectors and stakeholders. Uh, it all started actually in 2020, where there was a first Slack group where people were just joining and complaining, why in Italy we don't have this uh, young water professional chapter of IWA, it's a pity. Uh, then uh, in 2021, we started, uh, especially with Mattia, that is our chair, uh, having some uh, both uh, virtual and uh, in-person uh, uh, meetings where we were just uh, uh, saying, okay, we have this idea, we wanna establish this group, uh, do we wanna join? Uh, and people were very excited about that. So we started with the proposal definition and all the uh, steps that you are all very aware. <laughs> and then in February, 2022, we were officially IWA branded uh, group. We were very happy with that. And we started all our activities. 
uh, our vision was to try to um, create a proactive network, building relations uh, and uh, developing transversal competencies, both in Italy and internationally, sharing uh, innovation ideas uh, and best practices uh, through, through events and social media advertisements. Uh, and we really wanted to uh, to be uh, to provide a professional growth to our young water professionals thanks to the mentoring uh, of the senior professionals. So these were the main driving forces. Next, please. Here uh, it's just an overview of the steering committee. So uh, beside the coordination uh, team, so the chair, uh, myself, and the secretary. We have technical training, innovation, communication, network uh, growth, external relations, event coordinator, social media, and treasurer. I just really wanted to see how we are organized. We are nationally organized. We don't have regional, uh, uh, let's say, committee, steering committee. Uh, and if you see that you, we have some common uh, uh, steering committee members, I think it would be great to have some communication among uh, different committee members of different groups to help each other in uh, sharing ideas. Uh, and these uh, committee members are sort of leaders of some working groups that are uh, responsible for each of these uh, activities. What we uh, try to do uh, at also in all these events that we had at the beginning was to try to engage uh, more people in these working group working working groups and what we said is uh, we tried to engage them uh, saying what we they could learn sort of the skills that they could learn joining each kind of group here is just a list for just for some numbers, we have uh, 765 followers on LinkedIn from 27 countries and 140 followers on uh, Twitter. And uh, uh, we are reaching with our newsletter 125 uh, members from nine countries. So we are actually happy because we are sort of new, but numbers are on uh, our side. But the limitation we see is that, as you see, 70% of our members are from academia. So we are still struggling uh, to uh, engage more uh, partners from uh, industry and water utilities. What we are trying to do is to have a list of uh, potential Italian uh, industries and water utilities that we could reach uh, to, to let them know we are here, we wanna, uh, we wanna know your young water professional if they want to join our network. And the second uh, limitation is uh, in, the, in the other graph you see, we have uh, level three is uh, our committee member. As I told you, we, have a, we are 11. L level two is people in the working group that are not in the committee member. And we have only additional 11 people, uh, while all the other members are just sort of receiving uh, the, the newsletter and uh, events uh, uh, and all the materials we are providing, but they are not really active in uh, organizing events or uh, helping in all the important stuff to, to do to, to make this uh, chapter successful. So this is uh, our limitation now. We are, we are happy to be here to talk about that. Uh, what? How can we try to engage them? That's our current activities we are trying to do. Uh, so first of all, we send every three months the newsletter uh, by email with all the uh, past and future events. Uh, we we open the, the LinkedIn and Twitter accounts. That was a, a good way to uh, to engage more people, uh, and we try to organize as uh, some virtual and uh, in-person informal events. Uh, you can see we had a lunch, ev lunch event uh, in May and we have an in-person uh, uh, meeting in Milan during an IWA conference in uh, July, I think it was. Uh, then um, uh, besides these informal events, we are trying to now uh, go for a more formal and uh, uh, formative, let's say, 
events and webinars. Uh, I will talk about it uh, in the next slide. Uh, and we had uh, some meetings also with other uh, IWA young water professional chapters. That was very interesting. Work in progress, what we are planning to do to engage more people. Um, it, um, okay, maybe the skills that they could learn were not so convincing. So uh, we are uh, doing a list of uh, uh, actual uh, actions that that we are um, that we want to help. Like for example, we will not say, "Okay, you can improve your communication skills." No. Uh, okay, you can design our website. Are you uh, in for that? So a specific topic, a specific task uh, that uh, could uh, engage more, I, we hope, uh, our young water professionals. We still have to create uh, the website. We are uh, asking for funding from our governing members, but we still have to uh, get a response on that, unfortunately. Um, we plan to organize other informal events and webinars for technical training and having a, a database for all our young water professionals to to share where they are working on what uh, and so it's easier to connect and uh, now we are thinking to start the mentoring activity then i think it's the next uh, slide it's uh, yeah i want to let you know that uh, uh, next tuesday uh, we will have with the Young Water Professional Germany chapter the Building Bridge uh, event where we will uh, talk about wastewater reuse in agriculture and two young water professionals uh, from our networks will uh, talk about their experience. I think it's a, a great occasion to network about, among the different chapters and uh, you are all invited. Um, so save the date. <laughs> And actually, the next, uh, uh, the, the 29th of November, we will have uh, an event with a young water professional from Canada um, with, with a sort of gaming uh, gaming tool to, uh, to have some roundtables about different topics uh, around water. So I think it's what uh, Claud Claudia was saying they will have in January. Uh, and then uh, with the next slide, I want to thank you all and uh, hope you wanna uh, engage more with us. We're very happy. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for all the speakers. It's time for Q&A and discussion. If you have any question, please feel free to type your question in the chat box. Okay, then I will pass now to Shotalo. Um, he will moderate the Q&A and discussion session. Okay, so thank you very much for five presentation. And then, and also we have, we can see some questions already. Thank you very much. And, uh, and also question and answer we have. And the first question, I'm not sure this is for which chapter, but um, yeah, first discussion is, we have regional representative and also national committee. And maybe we have some problem between the regional and also national committee. And especially for five presenters today, do you have any good idea or a good suggestion how to manage the regional representative, regional and also national committee? Or is there any comments or ideas how to manage regional representatives and uh, national committee? Uh, this is okay. a question uh, from Jessica. I, I'd, I'd like to add to it a bit. Um, uh, Anya, I guess, um, pointed that first out uh, about the pro province, you know, delegating the committee to the province. Um, uh, we are uh, kind of, you know, nationally uh, structured, but what we have done is that we had taken ambassadors from every provincial headquarters. Mm -hmm. um, this way, we have actually tried to, you know, go into the universities for the people. Uh, 
the ambassadors living in the same city, it is easier for them to go to the university and campuses and spread the word. So this, this has been quite easier to work with, especially um, with the academic sector, because uh, most of the audience that usually the young water professionals group see and experience are students. So that particularly is very useful in that sense. Okay, thank you very much. Is there any comments? Oh, we have some already some questions. So go to the next one so from uh, yeah one question focus on the sponsors so is there any chapter to have some sponsors from out of the ywp committee or do you have any plan to have the sponsor to manage the ywp committee maybe i can i can start with the uh the the, the sponsorship um yeah so it's a it's a really good question around sponsorship um the short answer is um, with a lot of difficulty, uh, we've managed to, to raise funds in the past. Um, I think that um, there's a couple of things to, uh, to, to, to sort of consider when, uh, when looking at it, or at least um, in the UK. Uh, the first is to think, um, you know, what is the value add to these organizations? of what we're doing. So we generally collect uh, sponsorship for our conference. Um, for us, it took us a little while, but you know, we recognized that it was hugely beneficial for organizations to send um, young professionals to the conference. And not only that, to be seen to be supporting young professionals at the conference um, for a number of different reasons. You know, one that is um, you know, helping to accelerate development in the workplace, um, helping young professionals build links within the sector so they're less likely to leave, um, career development opportunities, also the opportunity to um, advertise yourself to potential you know, um, uh, new talent uh, in early careers in the industry and so on and so forth. And so we had to do a lot of thinking uh, at the start about you know, what, what those different lines were around the value that we could bring, uh, both in a generic sense, like I've highlighted there, but also you know, what uh, the value of specifically the, um, the the conferences, and then after that, it's about um, being um, quite uh, quite bold, but not uh, not arrogant, and um, being happy to uh, to contact um, different people at a decision making level in different organisations, have conversations, and see where it takes you. The, you know, it inevitably you're going to get disappointment and being turned down and actually that's going to be most of the time people are going to say no um but if you uh, if you reach out to enough people you start building relationships uh, eventually you'll start to see sponsorship coming through and not only that i found that the people uh who sponsored us in the past are the most likely to sponsor us in the future so you start to learn you know who your supporters are who your um who your friends are in the wider industry and that's why i say when we say we're looking to build our engagement across different organizations it's not just at a sponsorship level you know we now realize which organizations and which people um really see the value in the work we're doing and who we can bring along um to you know expand our activities and and, and so on so a lot of difficulty um and you've got to be ready to be disappointed but i think that um uh you know go to the top, you know, reach out to directors and CEOs um, and also uh, be happy to move on. Kirsten, is there anything else? Yeah, I was just going to add to that, Matthew. Um, I think there's something in there as well about being quite granular with the sponsorship. So, you know, what might, off, what might work for one organisation might not work for another. So it's having that flexibility as well, perhaps having some sort of structure um, you know, enough to, to approach them, but then also being willing to, to enter into a bit of a conversation, a bit of a discussion. Some might want a longer relationship with the chapter, some might want something a little bit more short term. So I would say, um, I would say take Matthew's advice and be bold, but at the same time also have that um, negotiation as well and, and find out what they're looking for. Uh, it's definitely an employee and a young water professional market just now as well. So the chances are that it will be something in it for them for them too and it's just trying to identify what that is and how we can offer and build that relationship going forward okay thank you very much for the comment from uk um quickly i have the comment also question um so is there any change and is there any difference between COVID and after the COVID? 
Uh, one comment from the Anya. So, is there, how can I say, the company's motivation a change because of the COVID? Motivation to the fund uh, was be a sponsor? Um, not in the UK, enormously. Um, because the, the sort of money that we're, we're looking for, and I recognise the UK water sector is very wealthy, I think, um, as compared to globally. The, the sort of money that we're asking for is in the order of magnitude of um, uh, a few thousand pounds, which in the UK is a huge amount to our organisation, and it allows us to put on conferences and keep prices low for YWPs. But for the organisations that we're talking, uh, talking to, um, quite often, um, you know, very big water companies or multi multinational um, uh, consultancies, uh, they're often fairly happy to provide that sort of level of support without really thinking about it. Um, so, you know, we're not saying it, it, it's got easier after COVID, but we were never in the sort of um, asking for the, type, the, the amount of money that um, uh, we would necessarily... Um, that would necessarily end up being affected by the kind of global climatic changes. And again, that's just a, a reason. The, the main reason for that is uh, due to kind of like the relative wealth of the water and engineering sector, I would say. Okay, thank you. And we have only 10, about, about 10 minutes. So we go to the quickly. And this is the question for only a uh, question for the Italy chapter. Uh, could you explain about uh, maintaining support proposed by Italy chapter more? Yeah, um, we are actually starting thinking of, about that. Uh, and actually maybe Claudia, I don't know if you wanna say something because she is uh, our responsible for this uh, activity. Yeah, I mean, the innovation coordinator, but I'm also in the other group that is the technical group where we're actually promoting the mentorship and we're actually trying to realize how what's the best way of actually having a mentorship program. For example, we thought about LinkedIn. So provide a series of different mentors uh, names and uh, to and then couple them to students or other people, the other young water professionals. Uh, so we don't have a really clear defined structure because we are waiting also to have this website. So everything is linked to the website because we were also thinking that the website could be a way to promote mentors uh so yeah right now we don't have a really clear structure but we have ideas of what are good ways of proceeding <laughs> so if uh, someone else has already a mentorship program ongoing i saw some of some of the chap chapters have one i think the danish chapter if i remember well i saw something on the <laughs> linkedin uh i think some of the chapters have a program so it would be nice also for us to have some inputs on uh yeah uh, good ways of proceeding. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, going to the so next question. But before that, Nela, Nela, you raise your hand. Is there any comments of the sponsorship or something? Ah, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I just wanted to come. And I'm I'm a chair of Young Water Professional Denmark. Just wanted to uh, share our experience. Uh, and also, I was very interested to know, like, what other, what's the other chapters' experience? We've had sponsorships for for many years, um, and and in the in the past years, we did a lot of work on putting like organization, like more structure into the way we do things. And one of the things we did was with uh, the sponsorships. Uh, Ines Spreda, she's our she's our treasurer, and she put together like a sponsorship program with different types of sponsorships for uh, with different length, lengths so that we will have sponsors for X amount of years uh, for different uh, amounts of money so that it will, um, it will help us maintain like stable income over the years, even though we might have more or less sponsors over the years. And um, yeah, I think it might be interesting at some point to like maybe have um, um, yeah, I don't know, like a uh, focus on on this will love to like maybe help other uh, chapters or hear from other chapters on how you do it. Um, I think it's very important to um, internalize and be confident about the value that you provide to the companies, which is, I think, a lot. And like be if when you are clear of uh, of what you can provide, 
I think it's easier to 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 get those those sponsorships. We, for example, um, we make commitments to send them our newsletters, to have visits or their companies, and talk to their young people. Uh, have free invitations to our conferences, things like that. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks. Then I go to the next question from uh, from Claudia. This is maybe the new topic. So. Um, the YW, each YWP chapter, how their relationship with their IWA country chapter and how important is that partnership for your YWP chapter? So this question, I think this question is like, yeah, how to make the relationship between country chapter and also YWP chapter in each country and also how to, or how, how much they um, use the energy to make the good relationship or how to, how much they commit to make the relationship. This is a question, I guess. So is there any comments from chapters? Maybe I can start. Okay, thank you. I think this is uh, not so easy for us. I would say, I don't know if Mattia <laughs> wanna say more, but, um, it really depends if they are uh, engaged and if they want something to happen, then they will be very active. <laughs> uh, we we are writing, a, I think, every two or three months, um, a sort of a summary uh, of some um, uh, the source papers, articles. Uh, in Italian that they would post on their website. Actually, we thought they would post in their website, but then they are posting it in a sort of newsletter that they have. Um, but this is something that they really cared about. So we said, okay, I think we think it's uh, mm, something that could give us also uh, opportunity to let other people know that we are here. So we were very happy. They actually organized uh, an event uh, in a water festival in Italy uh, and we were uh, invited. So we had a spot to, to let people know we are here. So I think it's, uh, this was a good point. On the other side, uh, when we have some requests, for example, for the website uh, um, funding, then things become a bit slow. <laughs> immediately I, we don't know why actually maybe we know why but uh, yeah they become slow so this is a, I think a, a struggle for us because if we are not uh, supported by our governing member then uh, thinking about having other sponsors uh, supporting us uh, make me make us feel a bit uh, not so confident as Nerea was uh, saying uh, uh, right now so um yeah the the sponsorship part is uh mm, our next uh, next uh, uh, issue to overcome for sure but we are I'm, I'm very curious to hear from the others okay thank you very much for the comments and uh, we have still some question and also answer in the zoom chat but we only have the 5 minutes so i want to open the question and our comments so is there any comments or also the question to the each chapter? Actually, we don't have much time, so it's okay to say or to raise your hand anytime, anytime, any way it's okay. Shatara, since no one uh, has a step okay. up, I do have some, some comments on this. I really like the discussion that we had it. And I think that um, the question related to, to funding, to find a sponsorship, uh, the first one related to the competition, how do you manage this? And related to, to the last question that Claudia has made in terms of, uh, and also following up on, on Beatrice's comments, I, I think that it's a, diffi a difficulty to, to go to the next stage on this. And Beatrice, uh, I'm sure from, based on, on all the reports that I read from the chapters, this is not something that is only with the Italian chapter or with the, the Equatorian chapter. This goes with all the chapters, all of you are facing uh, different levels, but the same difficulties. 
So th this kind of a platform that we have here is uh, a learning opportunity where you, you can share um, what we can um, learn from each other, but how, also how can we uh, solve the, the situation that you all are facing. Um, I noticed that sponsorship is a show uh, difficulty, the, the engagement during Congress is, is also an issue. So for, for each of the chapter present here, not only uh, those that were speaking, but also that we have representatives from other chapters. We have Diana from, from the Colombia. We have Philip, uh, Jacob, that is also from the, um, from the Ghana chapter. Uh, all of you are facing the same situation. So thinking about it, how, how can we solve this? It's a hard question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jacob, any comments as, as the chair of the, the wider peace steering committee on this? Yes, thank you, Isabella. I think um, this is something that as a committee we are also trying to find an answer to. But uh, um, one of the things that I've come to realize, which I think um, Matthew did mention, is um, the value that you can offer to the organizations that um, are in a position to donate money towards the YWPs. I think we've not really communicated that very well. So it's important that we look in that regard, how do we package the YWP community so that people would be interested and say, oh, why don't we invest in this group of people? Because we know this is the value that we are going to get in return. So, I think we, we, we have to focus more on that and then um, first we look for other solutions too. Anik? Yeah, um, I'm, I'm sorry if the time's up, but I just have a question and uh, you guys, if I've seen two uh, chapter slides having, you know, SIVA in one and there was Institute of Water in the other, the I Water one chapter. I, I, I really cannot remember the chapter names. So um, it's like, you know, uh, having a mentor with you all the time. It's like a, uh, it's like an organization, an older sibling with you who is going to accept things. Uh, the, one of the difficulties that we have, even though when we have, you know, secure the funds, there is a level of trust issue between um, the seniors giving away the funds to the young people. They're always concerned about that whether you'll be able to utilize that in a responsible manner or not. So they usually are looking for a branded account and, and, and some company or organization attached to it so that they can transfer them out to them rather than to the chair or the treasurer itself. How do you actually, you know, um, generate that kind of symbiotic relationship either with Eva, uh, the, the, uh, the SIVA or with the iWater uh, for the respective chapters, if, if you can add a bit to it? Yeah, ours was, sorry, I'll just jump in about iWater. So iWater is the UK with the Institute of Water. Um, ours is a formal agreement. So ours was done um, by uh, senior people. So by the uh, uh, the CEO of um, of Institute of Water and also by um, uh, by IWA as well, organisationally. Um, so, so that's been... Uh, uh, that that was a, an agreement uh, that happened quite a long time ago now that I was would provide the secretariat roles and so there was always a sort of level of trust there with the high level buy-in that this would happen and again when you're speaking to sponsors like you said it's been a huge benefit to us because it gives us a um, a company uh, bank account and not only a company bank account one that's very very trusted um, in the water sector, Institute of Water that we can use and that we can use to manage our funds and that we can use to um, uh, speak to uh, to the senior people um, to get the uh, the agreement drawn up properly by the proper legal channels and everything um, and, uh, and and have the sort of organizational structure as well put in place to manage it. So that's um, that, that's what I would say. Um, and what since that's been done, it's been very, very easy working like that. So. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you very much for the discussion. We already time has come. So, uh, Chen, can you give the final remarks? 
Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for your for sharing your experience. I do believe that we have learned a lot of from different chapters uh, because there are many great and effective initiatives. Uh, I want to say yes, I'm inspired because I know there's still a lot of thing that we can do to get a uh, sponsorship to empower our young water professionals and to make our chapter more influential in water sector. So uh, I think it's really fruitful today. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for your participating and for your sharing. So um, at the end of the global coordination call, Isabella will highlight some updates from IWA and IWA uh, Young Water Professionals Steering Committee. OK, so Isabella. Thank you, Chen. So uh, once again, thank you all for joining today. I have some quick uh, information from the sec secretary yet. And I'd like to start with our call for the Youth Action for SDG 6. This will be part of our engagement to promote youth in the water sector in the partnership with Granfuls. So if you scan the QR code, you can see all the requirements from for this call, and you can apply until the 25th of November. And you'll be if you apply and you are selected, you'll be joining our delegation of 12 young water professionals to participate in the UN 2023 Water Conference in New York. Following this, uh, let me go over to next. Yes, uh, we have a webinar this week about science to policy from earth preservation to legislation. And I do invite you all to, to sign up and attend. It will be really interesting on this. And for those that are in Spain, um, we have our Digital Water Summit there. And I sent you all the chairs, uh, the country chapters chairs, uh, regarding an opportunity for our YWP. So reach out to your chairs and let me know if you are interested in joining and attending the Digital Water Summit. And uh, if you have any other um, member that is not part of IWA, but is in interested in joining and being part of it, especially for applying for the, um, the Grandfields uh, call, you can use and share with them the discount code for new membership on this. And follow us on social media. And again, if you have any kind of uh, questions and comments that you want to make and also to know more, um, about a chapter and getting um, the mayor address for, for another chapter, uh, you can just drop me an email here. I have my email below, so yeah. And thank you all for coming and, and joining us today. I hope that this is just the start of the conversations and then that we can continue engaging our YWPs more and more within IWA, but also in the water sector. Uh, Shotar and Chen, do you want to add something? Yeah, from my side. Again, thank you very much for today and keep in touch. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Ciao. Bye bye.